Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. Well, Top Hat Gaming Man wearing a um, trilby I suppose. Um, and yes, I am calling it a trilby which is the English term rather than calling it a fedora. Which is actually the German term. And I find it rather bizarre many of the Anglo speaking countries are starting to call it a fedora as well. How peculiar is that? Anyway, I'm going off track. I wear different hats in different climates. Yes, because I'm a man of the world, so I can't wear a top hat every single day. Otherwise, I don't know, I'd bloody sweat to death or something. Anyway, I'm going off track a little bit. Today's video is about reproduction game boxes, specifically for retro games. I have noticed on the whole that many um, YouTubers in the retro gaming community appear to hold very negative views towards these things. Like, how ridiculous. It's a piece of cardboard. How can you hate cardboard so much? Especially, yes, it's even more strange that the same people who hate these pieces of cardboard uh, being manufactured by someone in their home. They're the same people who are playing bl bloody hundreds for a piece of cardboard that's been manufactured by a corporation 30 years ago. <laughs> cardboard is just cardboard, but yes, I'm digressing a little bit, and I do know there's a little bit more to it than that. Anyway, from what I gather, a lot of these um, YouTubers' um, negative outlook towards um, reproduction boxes obviously gravitates towards um, sellers obviously trying to con people like you will occasionally get some dirty Jimmy Savile scumbag reseller on eBay trying to pass off um, a reproduction box as the real thing which to be honest as I said I do not condone whatsoever that is scummy and dirty and it's just the sort of horrible things that poor people often get up to in order to buy their I don't know what, what do they do with their money buy their cans of Stella or their scratch cards or or whatever other things poor people what do they do they, do they smoke cannabis I don't know I'm not poor you people tell me anyway as I said there are negative aspects towards the reproduction boxes, well, in terms of what you can do with the reproduction boxes, but blaming the boxes themselves for that is a little bit unfair in my opinion. That's completely the seller's responsibility. They're the ones being dirty and scummy. It's essentially like saying all guns are bad as well, which is ridiculous. Like, you can use a gun uh, responsibly, the same as you can use a reproduction box responsibly. It's like saying, obviously, guns don't kill people, people kill people. And reproduction boxes, you can use exactly the same analogy for that as well. Whilst many YouTubers on a regular basis screech about how much they hate reproduction boxes and how they're unnecessary and unneeded, I personally could not disagree more. I bloody love a good reproduction box on occasion, as they really do serve a purpose. Let's take um, European SNES cartridges, for example, Japanese Super Famicom cartridges, um, Nintendo 64 cartridges all over the world. Those cartridges feature absolutely no top label. So if you have um, hundreds upon hundreds of Super Nintendo cartridges, such as myself, if you put them all on the shelf, you can't bloody tell what you're looking at. It was just loads and loads of grey bloody cartridges. So what's the best way of dealing with that problem? Obviously, finding a way in which you can display them, um, in which you can actually tell which games they are, so you can play them when you choose to. So, on occasion, I have actually ordered reproduction boxes to put on my shelves to put certain games from my collection in so I can actually see them when I choose to play them. Now, obviously, it's up to the individual on how many games they want to have reproduction boxes made for, but I suppose as consumers ourselves, it's down to us to set the rules and how we like to do things. So for me personally, if there's games I absolutely love and feel really passionate about, like let's talk about, I don't know, the really obvious ones, Secret of Mana, the Mega Man X series, um, Link to the Past, um, the Super Mario Brothers games on uh, the Super Nintendo. For games like that, I will get a completed box. I am so passionate about those games and love those games so much, I want a complete copy. So I can just skim through the manual whenever I want and look at that authentic, lovely box. However, on the same hand, I have games in my collection which I just feel a bit... I kind of like you, but at the same time you have a lot of weaknesses as well. And personally, I don't know whether I want to pay out a fortune just to put you in a box. I don't really think you deserve that, no. So yes, to be honest, I will put, if I've got games in my collection, 
and the box isn't worth a lot of money and the game's just okay, I'll buy the real box. But there's, um, I suppose the best way is if we was to look at a gra make a graph in our head and you've got the game's quality and the game's quality is quite low but the price point is quite high. That is when I would buy a reproduction box for it. Essentially when it doesn't, um, for me as a consumer, it doesn't feel like I should be paying the money for it. Like, here's some examples of reproduction boxes I own in my collection for games I do not want to pay out for the real thing. Um, because the reason why I bring uh, this one up, for example, is quite a few people have actually pointed it out in some of my videos. I have a reproduction box of Castlevania Vampire Kiss on the Super Nintendo. That's um, Dracula X for all the Americans watching. That game, I think a boxed complete copy in Europe, sells for about £500 at the moment. For anyone who's played that game, it's not a £500 experience. Castlevania Vampire Kiss is a very, very flawed game. So only a complete nut job is one of, going to want to pay that kind of money in order to own a complete copy of it. Like, why? There's literally no reason to want a complete copy of Vampire Kiss. It's just plain not good enough. However, although it's flawed, it is an okay game. So I'm happy to own a loose copy of it, but I am not giving it the honour of being in a real box. Like I said, these are just the rules I set for myself so I don't burn my money. It's the logical way for me to go forward as a gamer. So if I want to own as many good games as possible, I'm not going to be wasting money on the average ones as well. Like I said, that's just... It's just it would be bad decision making, wouldn't it? Another example as well, um, I have a reproduction box for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game. Again, because that game is very average. Uh, I think a completed box copy would probably only cost about £50 or something like that. But at the same time, it's such a lacklustre game, in my opinion, it doesn't deserve it. But at the same time, I do have some nostalgic memories regarding it, so I would never part with my cartridge. For example, I got that in the heat of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers popularity, and on top of that, I got that as a gift from my uncle, who is also now deceased, making, obviously, the game mean even more to me than it did before. But again, it doesn't mean enough to me that I would want it in an expensive piece of cardboard, essentially, when I can just get a piece of cardboard which is very, very similar, manufactured for one-tenth of the price, or one-hundredth of the price in um, Vampire Kiss's case. So yes, unless you're an extremely rich man, in my opinion, you should try and be as smart as possible about your retro gaming purchases. Like, don't pay out all that money for something which doesn't mean anything to you. Like, there's no point in paying out loads of money for average games. As I said, it that doesn't make any sense to me. It might make sense to you, but that's what I said. That's why you set your own rules. And these are the rules I'm set it, setting for myself. With regards to reproduction boxes as well, obviously as they're brand new, they look bloody ridiculously nice. They've got no creases on them. They look like you've just bought a game from a shop, especially once you've stuck it in a box protector as well. It would look exactly the same as um, a game, a real version, because it's in a box protector. So side by side, the games will look the same. Also, let's talk about conditions. This is um, going off track a little bit. But obviously, if you've got a reproduction box, um, it's going to be in mint condition, as I said. So if you buy an actual mint condition um, game from that period, it's going to look very, very close to a reproduction box. So for those reasons, I've always found myself going for um, boxes that are a little bit more tatty. And there's several reasons why I go for the tattier games. Firstly, it's obviously been more loved and appreciated if it's got a little bit more battered. It's obviously been played and appreciated by someone so much more than a game that's in mint condition. Because if it's in mint condition, it means someone has never given it the time of day. It's in mint condition because someone essentially doesn't care about it, unless it was some weirdo back then who was looking after the box. But I think that would be extremely rare, but hmm, I'd have to think about that a bit more. Anyway, so yes, I will also prefer a tattier game because that stops it looking like a reproduction. If a game's in mint condition, it will look exactly, well, 95% the same as a reproduction game. So the Tatia games actually look their genuine age. So it looks more like how a retro game should look, I suppose. And um, 
further on from that as well, like I said, it's just about the character these old games have. Oh, and more importantly, the Tatia ones actually are cheaper than the Mint Condition ones. And the Mint Condition ones are the ones that look the same as Repros. That's what's funny about that. The Tatia ones look more authentic and they're cheaper. So yes, if we're going for authenticity, a Tacky game's better than a Mint Condition one. So yes, with regards to the reproduction boxes, overall, I think they should be manufactured for our pleasure. Our pleasure as gamers and nice little display pieces to keep our expensive um, SNES cartridges in good condition and so that we can easily just look at the shelf and select the bloody game we want. I haven't got that many reproduction uh, boxes, I must say. I'd say about a good 95% of my boxes are authentic. But like I said, on the odd occasion, I go for a reproduction box mainly to stop me, like I said, going for a box I don't want in particular. It's a good preventative measure I've put in place. And speaking of that as well, um, like we've, we talked about the sellers earlier um, trying to pass off reproductions as the real thing. There are a lot of differences between reproductions and the real thing which make them pretty easy to tell apart. Like if you look at the inside of the majority of reproduction boxes, uh, the cardboard's actually white. On official um, boxes, the cardboard's grey. And um, even if you touch it, it will feel different. Um, the shininess level will be different as well, have a different level of shine to the real thing. And you also normally get the Nintendo seal of approvals on games. And on um, authentic ones, it's more of a gold tinge. And on um, reproduction, it's more of a, like, a brownie sort of tinge, I suppose. So it's very easy to tell the difference. So you're not really going to be fooled by anyone trying to pass off a reproduction of the real thing. And if you really are that stupid, and that ill-informed that you cannot tell the difference between the two, then you've really got to ask yourself, what in the bloody hell are you doing spending hundreds of pounds on pieces of cardboard anyway if you don't even know anything about what you're buying? Like, you'd have to be a complete idiot to be spending fortunes on something you've done no research into. So I don't really think these resellers who constantly are vilified are really ever going to get away with their scams anyway. They're not going to get away with it. And even if they do get away with it, they've obviously sold their products to another idiot who probably deserves conning anyway, as they're buying stuff without doing any research. Okay, um, let's talk about a hypothetical scenario for a minute. Let's say, for example, a reproduction box manufacturer comes along who are so good that they manage to replicate the boxes absolutely perfect. These boxes this hypothetical manufacturer are producing are identical to that of the boxes in which Nintendo were pumping out in the 80s and the 90s. The cardboard looks the same, it feels the same, there is absolutely no difference. Then I suppose this scenario about resellers being able to pass off um, these reproductions as the real thing would become a reality. But then again, if this ever happened, which I personally don't think it could, if it happened, eventually, it would only become a good thing anyway. Because you could reproduce boxes from the 80s and 90s and do it spot on. That would only be good for all of us, because the costs of retro games would absolutely plummet. Which would be amazing for gamers all over the globe. There is literally no benefit to any of us for games to be going up in value. Unless, of course, we are talking about the evil, um, the evil niche within game collecting. So I suppose you've got all those scummy resellers, haven't you, who sit on games for years and years, hoping they go up in value so they can sell them when they're at a higher price point. That'd be fantastic for the rest of us, though, wouldn't it? Watching their bloody stock plummet in value. <laughs> yes, that would be absolutely lovely, wouldn't it, seeing all those speculators suffer. So yes, for that reason, that's another reason why I like reproduction boxes. They're dangerous to the speculator and um, they keep idiots away as well. So they're like an idiot preventer, essentially. So yes, I don't think as... Um, as gamers, I don't think uh, reproduction boxes are that much of a threat to us at all. If anything, they're, they're good um, money savers and they look they look bloody cool, you got to say that. Yes. So yes, overall, I bloody love a good reproduction box on occasion. Um, they are the perfect um, holder, I suppose, for my um, average games within my collection. The ones that aren't quite good enough to pay a fortune for, but they're still good enough to want to pick up and play uh, once every couple of years. 
I suppose. Anyway, what are your thoughts on reproduction boxes and are they as dangerous uh, um, to the hobby as many YouTubers on here have been claiming they actually are? Because personally, as a sort of collector myself, I found them nothing but helpful on my quest um, in purchasing great games. Yes, they're lovely. Love a good reproduction box. Cheerio! Let's <laughs> go.